Hi, good morning everyone. I'm Dr. Vandana Katyal, um, specialist orthodontist um, in Sydney. My clinical practice is CCC Smiles in Mossman and uh, we also operate in CBD. And I also lecture for best orthodontic seminars and sessions where we help dentists and we've had a few orthodontists attend our courses. Um, so we um, today want to show you something. So uh, particularly, this is a coaching case. So we do have quite a few dentists, uh, not just in Australia, New Zealand, but globally, sending me their Invisalign cases to help them, sometimes with diagnosis, sometimes with the digital setup and treatment planning, um, and sometimes troubleshooting. So... What I've got here is a coaching case from uh, a general dentist and this uh, is, you know, I'm not going to show you photographs of this case, um, but I just want to show you this de-identified information to help you um, with your next clean check. So I, I'm going to just go over to the window and I'm going to show you, I'm going to zoom in here. So this is a case, okay, let's remove all the attachments, let's remove all the IPR, everything that's planned. So here is the model looking front on. When we look from the side, we can see they're nearly a class one occlusion. And when we look on patient's left side, again, it's mostly class one buccal segments with a, a little bit of um, canine sort of interdigitation that's not um, class one. So... You know, this is kind of a relatively simple case. Now, let's look at the upper arch. And if I just zoom back, the upper arch um, has some minor rotation of the 2, 3, and 1, 3, and just some minor crowding. Okay, and if we look at the lower arch, we've got some slight imbrication. So we've got, uh, you know, 3, 2, and 4, 2 slightly displaced uh, lingually. But overall, I think it's, it's quite... Um, a good occlusion. Now we've got some also if you look um, at the arch form we've got a little bit of uh, discrepancy in the arch form so we've got a little bit of uh, transverse discrepancy here with a, a slight buckle cross bite on that uh, uh, one six. So we know we have slight dental arch discrepancy transversely also that we need to correct. Midlines are nearly coincident and also, when facially, when I looked at the photographs, the smile aesthetics are pretty good. So we want to maintain the incisal height, the incisal display. Um, and there is definitely a bit of a buckle corridor here on patients' um, right side when they're smiling. And so we want to actually eliminate that buckle corridor as well. So the smile does look a bit asymmetric uh, because of those leaning in um, one four, one five, and one three. So he here is what the clean check comes back, and you know, partly um, it's probably what the dentist wrote in the diagnostic steps. Maybe partly because. Um, Invisalign defaults are like that. So let me show you what the ClinCheck comes back. So um, ClinCheck's come back with some IPR, okay, IPR of nearly 0.5 millimeter, by the way. So it's quite a lot for a lower incisor. And 0.5 millimeter on these canines and posterior IPR, which is something I pretty much almost never do. Very rarely a posterior IPR is necessary. So we've got already a simple case, which we're making worse with all this IPR that's been planned. Um, okay, let's look at the Boltons. The Boltons is telling us, really, it's insignificant, okay? So Boltons is the tooth size discrepancy between maxilla and mandible. And it's showing it's pretty insignificant um, anteriorly and overall. So and Boltons over 2 millimeters is what you need to start thinking about. Okay. Now, what we also have is, let's start to put the attachments, okay? This is, I, I, I mean, I don't know what to say here. This is attachment attack. I have never seen that many attachments put on a class one, simple crowding case with minor transverse um, arch discrepancy, right? If you're going to put that many attachments on a tooth, 
uh, on, on a full arch, you might as well put braces. What's the point of Invisalign, right? I mean, this is attachment galore. I'm not sure why we left the seven behind. This is not a criticism of anything or anyone. Let's look at palatal. We've also got palatal attachments now, okay? So, again, it's not a criticism. It's what I'm trying to highlight here. This is a little bit over the top. I've just, there is no need for that. Why do we need an attachment on every tooth? Okay, attachments are required in Invisalign. When you have um, difficult tooth movements, when you have um, um, complex tooth movements, um, you have things like rotations, extrusions, you know, something where you're pushing the biologic limit. Retention maybe, you know, if you had zero attachments, maybe every now and then to have one for retention is not a bad idea. Um, uh, so why do we need so many attachments? Okay, so let's look at the clean check now. So first, before I even look at that, I try to look at this staging document here. So on the right here, you see what staging means is that all the teeth are moving uh, from aligner one, and it shows you when the IPR is planned uh, on particular teeth, and it shows you also, when the treatment ends, both arches are starting and ending simultaneously. IPR is kind of spread out throughout the treatment. You can see that. And the attachments all go on at stage one and come off at the end. Okay, so that's what really the staging is telling us, which should be the way a staging should be for a class one minor crowding case. Okay. But now let's look at the tooth movements, and I might zoom in here. So when we look at tooth movements, try to look at it from every angle. So we're going to look at frontally. So what we're seeing, intrusion. And what we're seeing here is basically the upper incisors intrude, then extrude, okay? That's a little bit of round tripping. So have a look here. The upper incisor intrudes, then extrudes again as the lower incisors intrude. So again, round tripping here, there's no need for that. We're going to maintain our incisal display. Okay, let's look at from the side view what's happening. So we are um, basically proclining upper incisor, proclining lower incisor, okay, and a bit of the vertical intrusion extrusion going on here. Okay, let's look at from the left buckle, what are we doing here? This is pre-treatment. We're actually, again, proclining incisors. We are extruding lower molars, and we're intruding lower incisors. Okay. So, firstly, intrusion is a very predictable movement with aligners within biologic limits. So, you know, lower incisors are mostly intruding. They do not need attachments, in my opinion. Um, let's look at the blue dots. The blue dots are telling us that there is slight complexity in movement here. So most likely, these teeth need an attachment, okay? That blue dot on the 2.5 is telling us there's intrusion of 0.73 millimeter in your treatment plan. However, um, intrusion is quite predictable, so you probably don't need that attachment. Um, the blue dot here, again, intrusion, probably don't need that attachment. Okay, so firstly... The treatment planning is wrong here um, in terms of how the upper incisors are moving up and then down. So it's kind of like, what the hell is going on? Lower incisor intrusion is probably the right way to correct the deep bite here. And if you look at this tooth movement chart, we can actually look that um, how much intrusion has been planned on every tooth. So you can look down here where my mouse is. 4.2 has 1.4 millimeter intrusion planned. 4.1 has 0 0.8 millimeter. So these are, again, within biologic limits um, and quite predictable. So they do not need attachments. When you look at extrusion planned on three... Sorry, I'm just trying to log back in here. I'm not sure what happened.